agenda, it's not always about more money. It's about how the current money is being spent and whether or not the programs that are being implemented and the policies that support are the foundations of those programs, if they specifically look at the gender element, if they indeed try to make sure that men, women, boys, girls benefit as they should, that men, women, boys, girls get the opportunities from those programs as they should. That is not always necessarily a question of more money. It's more the lens, how you look at it and how you implement it to try and take those, um, um, those issues into consideration. So I feel my unit should have a stronger collaboration with the ministry so that together we can fight, especially when it comes to domestic violence, when it comes to sexual abuse. You see, that is where the collaboration and then most of the time what we realize is that when the girls have problems, the perpetrators, we find it difficult to deal with them. And as a ministry, when there is that collaboration, we are working with girls in school and we, are, we mostly identify those girls who are vulnerable. So when we come closer and work hand in hand, I think we'll be able to, uh, to achieve more. The gender ministry should be focused more on the politics of gender. Uh, we are talking about affirmative action bill, but there are uh, gen uh, politics under, underscoring this. We also think that the gender ministry should be focusing on more less on uh, cash transfers in terms of social protection and dealing with broader issues of social protection. Broader issues like uh, empl employment with uh, care work, dealing also with national economic policy in the first place because what are the economic issues that m move people into um, uh, issues of poverty what is it that brings up poverty what's the cause of poverty and and if it is engaging more with the national policy then the number of people that require this form of social protection cash transfers will reduce the civil society groups also express the view that the ministry of gender and social protection should spearhead the participation of more women in the 2016 presidential and parliamentary elections to ensure that more women are involved in decision making. Giving an account of the ministry's performance from February 2013 to October 2015, the sector minister Nana Oyelita said the ministry is doing its best to incorporate gender issues into the national development agenda. She says the affirmative action bill will be presented to cabinet next week for consideration. It is going to correct the historical imbalances. You know, we have a 40% quota. So for parliament and other public sector, there'll be a 40% quota, even for the military, for police and security services. So this is what we are taking to cabinet. And the civil society fully supports this. If you ask me, socioeconomic empowerment of women is one key issue. And that is why for next year, we'll be looking at improving the digital literacy for our market women. How they can use the phone as a tool for marketing to improve their sales and to improve the businesses that they run. Our case brought by a member of the New Patriotic Party challenging the legality of the processes leading to the suspension of the party's chairman has been dismissed. Opon Chicheku had argued that the disciplinary committee of the MPP lacked jurisdiction to hear a petition calling for the suspension of the party chairman Paul Afuko. Malik Abbas Dabu of our political desk joins me in the studio with more on this good evening to you, uh, Malik. So why has the case been thrown out? Well, the, the, the judge's reasoning was simply two things. That, first of all, um, the, the, uh, the, part, the lawyer for the party had argued that, look, this guy doesn't have capacity by capacity in law simply means you don't have locals you don't have uh, the right standing to bring this case and the, the thinking is he doesn't he hasn't shown his personal interest if you go to court to seek to enforce another person's right you must prove that the violation of that right directly affects Thank you which he couldn't do he couldn't show in court that um, this affected him directly he couldn't also show that he was agent for Paula Foucault and that he was acting for and on behalf of Paula Foucault. And uh, also the party's constitution provides circumstances under which you can deal with matters internally. The argument was he didn't exhaust those internal uh, uh, systems before coming to court, so the case was premature. 
Right, that's interesting because there's uh, another a similar case in court involving three members of the New Patriotic Party who are also seeking to set aside the uh, disciplinary action uh, against Paul Afogo. Does this undermine their case? Well, that was the question I put to, to, to the lawyer, lawyer for those three, who also happens to be lawyer for Mr. Fuku. And in another uh, instance, of course, when the matter, the petition was brought before the disciplinary committee of the party, uh, Martin Kwebu and others were lawyers uh, for Mr. Fuku. But Martin is also a lawyer for these three yeah. who are in court challenging the legality of the process and insisting that the party must be restrained from allowing uh, uh, the first vice chairman, who is now acting chairman, Freddie Billy, to act as chairman. And when I called him up and said, well, this simply means your case like, is, yeah. is moved. And his argument was no, not, as, not exactly, because he was in court when this uh, verdict was given. He respectfully disagrees with the reasoning of the judge. He thinks that there are decided cases that indicate that there are the prevailing circumstances allow them to bring this case, even if he's not directly affected. The, then I called up the lawyer for uh, Opon Chichiku and asked him, uh, what was the reasoning? What were, what, why did this happen? Are you going on appeal? He said, well, for him, he thinks that, as Martin said, there are decided cases. That's true. Given that MPP is a public institution, in his opinion, members of that public institution who have reasons to believe that things are going in a manner that is in violation of the public institution's own constitution, they are entitled to go to the court. Especially so when they believe also that the internal processes will not give them any justice because they say steps have been taken that indicate to them that even if they were to explore those internal processes that are laid down in the constitution, they will not get justice. For that matter, the best route for them, the best forum for them to seek justice was to go to the court. Unfortunately, the judge did not share their opinion and ruled against them. Right, so granted that uh, they talk about decided cases, that suggests that they could bring these cases uh, even though they may not be directly linked to it. There's also the issue about you exhausting the internal processes. Absolutely. How did they respond to well, that? That was what uh, um, the, the, the Tafa, 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 Tasa, that was the lawyer, he's the lawyer for Opon Chicheku. And his argument simply was that they don't, um, they don't think that they, they don't think they will get internal, even though that would be difficult to justify because the party lays out uh, um, the processes. If you have been, you are aggrieved by any decision, by any organ or person in the party, you appeal. In the case of the national chairman, you have been suspended by the National Executive Committee, which endorsed a decision of the disciplinary committee. If you are unhappy, you, you send an appeal. Days. You have 21 days within which to send an appeal to the National Council. The National Council is the, the second highest decision-making body of the party. In fact, it's the highest decision-making body of the party outside of con conference. So they are outside of conference. So send your, your appeal to the National Council. The National Council can determine that the National Council is made up of over 100 persons the uh, Council of Elders, the National Executive Committee, members of Parliament, all of these people constitute the National Council. So send your appeal. If you don't send your appeal and sidestep that process and go to court, it will be difficult to convince any judge that um, your intentions and objectives are noble. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Malik Dabu, for the insights. Insightful, as always. We're taking a break. When we come back, we'll bring you business news. Please don't go away. <music> Good evening, Israel. All right, and what's coming up? Well, you know the IMF team, the mission team, is in town. They've been in town for the past two weeks to review for our second review under the program to see whether we are doing well. And apparently, we're supposed to have ended the the, program, the review yesterday, and they have to stay two more days. We, we have not concluded on whether or not we are doing well. And you know, by the end of November, we are supposed to uh, get some 116 million US dollars, Israel. So it's hanging. What, what's the problem? The president says we're doing well. The finance minister says we're doing well. Don't well, they believe us? The tech player is yet to tell us that, Israel. I take it away. <laughs> All right, now, disagreements over government's performance under the IMF program has forced the visiting team to extend its stay in Ghana by two more days. The team was expected to end Ghana's second assessment under the program yesterday, but checks with the IMF in Washington, D.C. reveals that some challenges have forced the team to end its mission in Ghana on Thursday instead of yesterday. Details in this report. The IMF mission has been in the country for almost two weeks now and is expected to come out with their report on how government has performed under the program so far. However, some serious differences on whether government has been able to meet the set targets under the program meant that a team led by Joel Tujabenat would have been forced to end their visit to Ghana 
without any conclusion. Joy Business is learning that the development would have meant that the team will not be able to recommend to its board for the release of some $116 million later this month to Ghana. The fund in Washington, D.C. has also indicated that in circumstances like these, the mission team might be forced to recommend to its board the mission was inconclusive. This should possibly lead to the team going back and coming in 2016 to combine the second and third review for Ghana. For some analysts, the development might not be good for government as it will raise some concerns about its commitment to stabilize the economy. The 2016 budget, which will be presented by the finance minister, said Tekpe, next Friday, is expected to see some significant cuts in government expenditure. The action Joy Business is learning has been influenced by difficulties in raising enough revenue to meet government spending plans for 2016. George Rafi Sources say one of the major casualties of these expected cuts are ongoing and new infrastructure projects. Another area that will be affected is the amount of money government is planning to extend to state institutions and even ministries for their day-to-day -day operations. Also, the cuts will affect allocations made to district assemblies. However, all these proposed actions will be taken only if government is not able to raise enough taxes to meet its spending obligations for 2016. Government in its revised 2015 budget estimates is hoping to spend 37 billion Ghana cities as against a 30 billion Ghana cities revenue expected to be raised for this year. Meanwhile, the Commission General of the Ghana Revenue Authority, George Blankson, has confirmed plans to review tax exemptions granted businesses in the 2016 budget. He, however, says not all exemptions are likely to be removed. From the pure revenue maximization perspective, we will want exemptions to be kept as much as possible. But one tax expert said that exemptions are like junk food. Everybody knows they are not good, we condemn junk food, but we all eat junk food. So, in fact, some amount of exemptions may be necessary, and that is not what we are talking about. What we as tax collectors press or push for is to bring down the level of exemptions so as not to hurt revenue unduly. Mm. The Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority is calling for some fresh measures that could make taxpayers willingly perform their duties whilst recalcitrant ones are punished. According to the Accra Sector Commander of Customs, Christina uh, Akutubanfo, this has become important to enhance government's revenue generation. Here she spoke to Joy Business today at a seminar on revenue mobilization and trade facilitation. Reforms in our processes to simplify and harmonize processes. There's a need for constant dialogue with the, with the business community. There is the need also to try and look at ways of achieving best results without overly being a regulator. We need to position ourselves as partners to understand each other's business. And that is the drift now to reward compliance is to facilitate more, give uh, the, uh, the traders who are compliant, set them apart and give them some treatment. For example, we now run the gold card system, which is a form of trusted trader operator. We say trusted operator because you know you are compliant, because we are verified to say that you are compliant. And so, for example, for the trusted trader or the gold card holders, they don't go through the normal rigors of their document having to be verified strictly of a 100% examination of their goose. As soon as their documents come, they're given that status, they do document verification, goods are released. But then we don't do that often and often without the checks. So we we'll go back to do post clearance audit once in a while to see that everything is, is okay. Now, some analysts have downplayed suggestions that the $5.2 billion fine against MTN Nigeria may affect the operations of MTN Ghana. The Nigerian Communications Commission last week fined MTN Nigeria for failing to deregister SIM cards on its network. 
The fine has seen the share value of MTN Group on South Africa's stock exchange fall more than 25%, wiping out almost $4.4 billion of the company's market value. The company's share trading on the exchange has consequently been suspended, raising questions about the implications for MTN Ghana. But President of the Institute of Directors, Frederick Ufusudakon, says the development only provides some useful corporate governance lessons for MTN Ghana. He has been speaking to Joy Business ahead of the Institute's sensitization workshop on corporate governance and partnership signing with the World Bank's private sector arm, the International Finance Corporation, IFC, scheduled for tomorrow. There would be a negative effect, but the impact will not be as massive as you're thinking of because MTN Ghana has its own board. He has its own CEO. And if their board are following the board processes as they are supposed to follow and they are doing all the things that they're supposed to do as a board and the CEO is doing what he has to do, then they would stand a bit exclusive as in what they do in Ghana. However, since they are knitted together, like I say, a relationship, it will only happen when it comes to the international front. The largest shareholder of the MTN Group, the Public Investment Corporation, has called for a meeting with the management to get an understanding of the crisis. Mr. Ofusudaku believes this is a step in the right direction. For the fact that it has affected their stock values and other things, shareholders are going to lose out and they are losing. And amongst the shareholders, they happen to be the largest shareholders. So if shareholders are losing, they are going to lose very big. Hence, they are concerned and therefore they have every right to investigate as they have already indicated because you know that with corporate governance is about transparency meanwhile the nigerian regulator has renewed mtn's operating spectrum and extended the operating license at a cost of 94.2 million dollars all right, now it's time to talk cash and let's see how the city is faring against the major currencies in the world. Now, the uh, CD gained a bit, so if you want to buy a CD, you need three CD, um, you want to buy a dollar, uh, you need three CD, 78 pesos, and if you want to sell, it's three CD, uh, 79 pesos, a British pound, five CD, uh, 82 pesos, and selling at five CD. 83 pesos the euro is buying at 4 cd 12 pesos and is selling at 4 cd 13 pesos let's go to the stock market uh, these are the uh, losers or the uh, three losers we have BOPP. Uh, it's closed at 3 CD 25 pesos. And that was a percentage change, 14 pesos. And then we have two losers, uh, I beg your pardon. EBG closed at 7 CDs, and the uh, percentage change was 6%. And the FML gained 1.1 CD 26, 1.26%. Um, and that closed at 10, 80 pesos. So you know what to um, invest in, in terms of stock. Now let's go to commodities, crude oil. Um, the, the, it, it gained a bit, it gained a bit. It, it closed at 48.61. Um, and so you can see the, 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 the change, the percentage change. And cocoa, cocoa to gain a bit, uh, 3,215 uh, uh, metric tons. So it gained a bit. And then we go to gold, gold. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not doing so well. Gold dropped, and you can see the percentage change. And so now you know um, where to save or what to invest in. That's how we wrap up with business. My name is Etonam Sim. For more news, log on to myjoonline.com. <laughs>
And now, we bring you a whole new experience as our every praise is lifted up by Bishop Hezekiah Walker. Your praises and worship will be uplifted by Joe Metal, Koda, Selena Boating, Anita Efeye, and Alabaster Box. Dial 60601 to download your favorite artist song. Date is Saturday, 21st November, 2015. At the Perez Dome, Jolu Junction. Time is 5 p.m. Rate is 60 Ghana cities and 100 Ghana cities VIP. Buy advanced tickets using Airtel money at all Airtel shops in Accra and Tema and enjoy 10% discount. Airtel Adon Praise 2015. Is brought to you by Airtel, the smartphone network, and sponsored by media sponsors. I do praise. Yeah, baby. Every praise is to our God. Watching your news, Prime Minister, the pressure group Citizen Ghana Movement is writing to the Attorney General requesting an update on the case involving businessman Alfred Agbesi Woyome. Last year, the Supreme Court ordered Mr. Woyome to refund some 51 million CDs. The court ruled had been unlawful paid to him from state coffers. This year, after being acquitted of the charge of causing financial loss to the state, Mr. Woyome promised to repay the money in installments. We're joined on Skype now by Nana Kwesi, a leading member of the pressure group Citizen Ghana Movement, for more on their communication with the Attorney General. Good evening to you, uh, Nana Kwesiria. What exactly do you want from the Attorney General? Wow. Hi. Good evening, Israel. Um, it's unfortunate that I just, I, 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 the lights just went off at the end. I'm just realizing, I'm just realizing <laughs> that. So, do no, so well, has hit you. But still yes, speak, we'll try and pick your voice. Yes, um, um, but I'm, I'm sure you can still do see not, me. Not, not yeah. very visible. It's, it's, the visibility is quite poor. Um, in fact, I don't know if we can get uh, you can get some light on yourself. Let, let, me, let me try. Let me try and get some light from my phone. Yes, from your phone. <laughs> but um, okay, so viewers, uh, this is what's happening. We're just about to speak to him on Skype. Except his lights, the lights went out in his area, and so okay. That's brilliant. So it works. Yes. Um, we overcame Doom, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, partially, I suppose. Yes. All right, so yeah. what exactly are you, do you want from the Attorney General? Well, um, for us, um, we are concerned about the, the, the status of the cases involving Alfred Agbesi Woyombe, the first which is the civil case in which the Supreme Court made an order for over a year now that the monies which were paid uh, illegally to the gentleman should be refunded to the state. Now, uh, the last time we heard was um, about anything about the case was when the Attorney General had filed an application before the Supreme Court for directions as to how to go about enforcing the judgment. Now, the, the reports, the media reports indicate that on that day in court, what happened was that uh, Mr. Alfred Agwesi Woyome, who he himself was not in court, uh, through his lawyer, made a proposal to pay the money by December 2015. Now, for us, we believe that it is not enough to make an oral proposal in court um, in order to show seriousness, in order to uh, show a sign of good faith. There is the need to reduce the proposal into writing one. Now, we haven't even come to the question of whether or not this proposal was accepted by the state. So we want to find out this proposal, was it truly made? One. Two. Was this accepted by the state? What were the terms of this proposal? What were the fair terms of this proposal? Has Mr. Alfred Agbesi um exhibited any sign of good faith but by making any uh, payments? Um, if at least to show that you are committed to uh, liquidating the entire judgment debt, some amount of money to show that you are indeed uh, acting in good faith in this regard. We are also particularly worried uh, because we want to find out if the, the, the state acting through the Attorney General 
has taken steps to preserve the assets of Mr. Alfred Moyome. The reason being that a judgment is good, but it is worthless if you are unable to enforce it or if you can't lay hands on anything to enforce the judgment. Okay. So, so it, is, it, for you, essentially, you're trying to find out, because for, for all you know, uh, Mr. Woyome will probably may have paid the money already. Well, um, the last time we checked, the last time we checked... It had not been uh, paid. Um, that is... That is um, an update which was given by um, Manasse Azuri Awuni, who is a journalist with your company, uh, Media House, indicates that that was this September 2015. From his checks, it, it did not reveal, according to him, that Mr. Woyome had paid a Peswa of the money. Right. That was September. Well, anyway, but what if uh, the... Attorney General feels to get back to you. What are you going to do? What's your next step? Well, um, we are going to advise ourselves. We believe that the proper forum to get what we are asking for will be the courts. If we don't get an answer within the 10 days that we have requested. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Nana Kweshiria. Nana Kweshiria is you, with the Citizen thank Ghana Movement. And, and thank you for overcoming the Doomsaw Challenge for us. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, too. Have a good evening. You, too. Now, moving on, microfinance firm Jody Fuadanfo, which literally means the trader's friend, is the latest financial institution to have to disappoint its clients. Customers who showed up at the company's branches demanding access to their deposits were shocked to learn the offices were closed. Some of the customers have been picketing at some of the branches in some regions. Derek, of course, some has the rest of the story. Sad, disappointed, and dejected. These three words aptly describe the feelings of customers who thronged the Kaswa branch of beautiful Adamfo to withdraw their savings. According to these customers, they heard rumors that the microfinance firm, which gives loans to mostly traders and the self-employed, was shut down due to some financial constraints. It's long time I came here, but I heard yesterday that they've been cruising the distance. So when I came, I came, there's nobody here, and I found out that a lot of people are here, and the team is almost close to me. Wow, so what are they telling you? Have you been told that you can withdraw money today? No, no nobody's telling us anything. I haven't seen anybody here. So why are you still here? We are waiting for them to come and uh, then we will draw our money. How much do you have in there? Uh, almost uh, f uh, 40, 40 million. That's 4,000? Yeah, 4,000. So what have you been told now? When are you getting your money? Nobody is, is not trying to ask us. And the workers, I understand they have been picked up by the police. Where have they been taken to? I don't know where they've gone to. So what would you do now? Um, I think we need to fight and get our money. The situation at the Techiman branch of the firm was not different. Customers were shown a notice that suggested the firm had closed till further notice. For now, the firm's tagline, Ejuma Impuntuo, which means we develop your work, appears to be mere words. The customers have vowed to go all out to get their savings. For Joy News, Derek Echo Sam. Right now, as I stated earlier, the Jodifua downfall is essentially the trader's friend. And uh, it's interesting how Jedifua Danfo can quickly change from Jedifua Danfo to Jedifu Atanfo. They're sending a statement on this particular issue, responding or reacting to what's been happening. And uh, they're saying the directors of Jedifua Danfo Microfinance Limited would like to assure all its valued clients that while we accept that the company is currently experiencing liquidity, ch liquidity challenges, we are making every effort to be able to meet all client payments in the coming weeks. We appreciate that the situation as reported in the media has caused concern and anxiety with some of our clients and wish to assure all and sundry of our commitment to work hard to resolve all payment issues. The tough economic environment that we are currently operating in has caused our business to experience liquidity shocks over the past 18 to 24 months, but we have continued to strive and will work relentlessly until all our depositors have received their payment and enjoyed and enjoy restored confidence of our valued clients. The branches that close temporarily will all reopen to serve our clients. We apologize for any inconvenience caused to any affected clients and would like to take this opportunity to express 
our gratitude to all our clients, investors and depositors for your continued support for our business. So this is coming from uh, Jody Fu Adam for Microfinance Limited, trying to assure its uh, customers that they are going to be paid their money. So we're taking a break. When we come back, we'll bring you international news. My wife, a fear dream, mini, and a major my me and in your mammy twenty. Network and Emmy Usen, Ne Hamajin, and in a ma, me quite journey, but a full business solution. Red business budget in tea, a can of me bono, a buffum cra, and my mini me juma four, let me fray a home free. Vodafone Business Solution. I'm a my ready business. The camp Vodafone Business Solutions. So, try red business in Shisha Yenu to Mafi. When you are doing my phone, try free calls. Momo. A brebian so better credit. No, when your bonus in your kick and be brave. Go Vodafone shop BM. Nay in town to so. Vodafone power to you. Aisha Ibrahim has just joined me to tell us what's coming up on Join News Interactive. Good evening to Aisha. We have so many interesting stuff coming in. So tonight, when we get interactive this evening, we'll be looking at uh, young people and we'll be asking about them, uh, the computer placement system. Third year GHS students are already anxious about their turn. It is, it is that the system is very corrupt that parents are paying their, their way through in order to have their awards admitted. That's why people who have been placed over there are being rejected. Well, we'll also tell you about the hashtag that is trending or trying to save the first library that was built in the Ashanti region. Join us for these and many more on the interactive segment on Joy News Prime. My name is Aisha Prime. The segment is brought to you Welcome back to Join News Prime Time now for a recap of our top stories. Kappa barge from Turkey yet to set sail despite earlier reports, but the Prime Minister has assured it will be in Ghana in good time to help address the energy crisis. Customers of microfinance firm Jennifer Down for picket at the company's branches after shut its offices citing a tax. The company says though it is experiencing liquidity challenges, it intends to pay all of its clients. And about 200 students posted to Wesley Girls Senior High School told by school authorities they cannot be admitted. And the Ghana Education Service is telling the school heads to manage the situation. Now, about 800 workers of Voltus Star Textiles Limited have locked up the factory amidst protests of unpaid salary arrears. Production at the factory has been suspended since Monday when workers locked up the place. The workers have vowed to keep it locked until President Mahama steps in to ensure the salary areas are cleared. I'm currently here at Japan uh, in the Volta region, uh, where workers of Volta Star Textiles Limited are uh, demonstrating over unpaid salary areas. Now, workers here have locked up the factory since Monday. Today, they've taken the protest on a different level. They are burning ties and protesting over nine months salary arrears. Now, workers here say they want President Mahama to come in and explain to them why after working for nine months, their salaries have not been paid. Volta Star Textiles Limited has a workforce of 1,300, mostly from the Japan Township and adjoining communities. The factory has in recent months gone through some challenging times, ranging from power cuts to the factory in March by ECG to partial abrogation of contract between the factory and DTP. That has given people reason to question the viability of the factory. <laughs> Wednesday's protest has to do with workers' salaries, which have been in arrears for nine months. The workers who have turned down a payment plan by management say similar promises and arrangements in the past have failed. The only way out, they say, is for President Mahama to step in. 
We have given them a mandate of one good year, but we are not hearing anything. So today, this time around, we are so serious, we are angry, as the saying goes, as we all know, as we all know, that the saying is, a hungry man is an angry man. We cannot afford working with our sto empty stomach. We cannot afford living in this kind of uh, 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 condition. So we are pleading on his... Kwame Nkrumah, or Sajifo doctor, has built this place for more generations to come and do what? Enjoy. But now, we, the workers of VSTL, have seen that eh, our leaders are taking us for granted. They don't want us to eat. They want us to do what? To go down for them to climb. So, what we are repeating and hitting a nail on the head of is that we need His Excellency John Dramani Mahama to come to our aid and say he is paying us our standing debt. This woman has worked in this factory for eight years. She tells me the situation has taken a toll on the workers. We are suffering. Kwame Nkrumah store should not be in vain. Rather, they should hold the fort so that our husbands can also provide for our children. We will not vote for President Mahama if he does not intervene. The flame may have died down today, but the root cause of this protest still persists as these agitated workers have taken an entrenched and extreme position of meeting with President Mahama to resolve the issue. Outsiders are also feeling the heat. We are not interested in their talks anymore because we have realized that they are all liars over there. All that we want is the money that we want. My last money that is left is this 10 pesos. How can I do that with it? So we are not inviting Mahama here empty handed with their talks. We are inviting them to come along with the monies. Meanwhile, a board meeting will be held next Monday to determine the way forward for both the workers and the company. Latif Idris, Joy News, Joppo. The Agric Ministry has started compensating farmers whose poultry farms were destroyed after the bird flu outbreak in May. Over 40,000 birds culled after they were culled after the detection of the disease. The ministry says it has so far disbursed more than 1 million CDs to 25 farmers across the country. Deputy Minister of Food and Agriculture, Dr. Hannah Bisu, outlined the criteria that was used in selecting the farmers. If, if you came to us, let's say you have 1,000 birds, then you come to us and you, they are all dead. You left it, let's say, 10 birds. We come in, we realize it's bird flu, we destroyed the 10 birds. Then you have, um, let's say, 10 bags of feed. Ten trays of eggs. We will destroy all these, so you'll be compensated for the ten beds that were destroyed by us, but not the 990 beds that you say that they died or they lost. And so we only compensate for um, those that we killed or we destroyed, and then the feed also. Uh, and then the number of trees that we also destroy. Sometimes there are, um, sometimes there are structures, wooden structures that we cannot disinfect. So they also go through some sort of, not through some sort of destruction, but we also have to burn them down. We destroy them. So we compile all these. Then we look at the current market prices of these items. Then government will pay 90% of the cost. Four suspects are facing prosecution in connection with the gruesome murder of the former DC of Inquanta South in the Volta region. The late Peter Kojo Kenyan so was shot dead by unknown assailants at his official residence in the district capital in Kwanta in November last year. One year. After the murder of the Nkwanta South District Chief Executive, very little has been made public pertaining to the case. However, investigations by personnel of the homicide units of the Ghana Police Service led to the arrest of 13 suspects. The Volta Regional Minister, Helen Adjuantosu, speaking to Joy News, explained that nine of the suspects were granted bail, while the other four are on remand in prison custody and facing prosecution. I know our 12 people were, were picked, but um, as they continue going to court, um, I think I think about nine have been have been freed or granted bail, but they still they still go to court. 
but I know that four are still in prison uh, custody. That's that's on remand, and they still go to court. I'm told that the next um, last week they were in court, and the next um, appearance will be in December. Helen Ajuantosu, who doubles as the acting DCE also said some prospective candidates have been shortlisted to the presidency for nomination as DCE for Nkwanta South. Yeah, they've come to hall for, um, for an interview with this shortlist and then um, the, the, those who were shortlisted had to go to Accra for another interview. So we're waiting for the president to come out, you know, with uh, those who have decided to appoint. And since we are also preparing previously for, you know, our primaries, I think I think they're waiting for the president to, to come out with the news that he wants to point after after the primaries. I think that's what they want. However, numerous development projects in the Nkwanta South District have been stalled. Residents believed this can be attributed to the lack of a substantive chief executive to oversee development activities. But Helen Ajuantosu debunked this and clarified that the project stalled because a legal embargo was laid on the assembly's accounts. A contractor who has also passed on, you know, worked for the Quanta District Assembly. Uh, it wasn't split by then. Uh, we had only Quanta District Assembly. Now we have Quanta North, we have Quanta South. So this contractor you know, work for the assembly, uh, put up um, a facility in now in Guantanamo. He completed the project uh, in uh, 2007. He wasn't paid. So the breaking news that's coming through is that President John Maham has accepted recommendations to remove Loretta Lamte from office as Commissioner for the Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice. The Chief Justice Georgina Wood set up the committee which gave this recommendation following a petition submitted against Mrs. Lamte. Evans Spencer joins me in the studio with more. Good evening to you, Evans. Good evening, I know John. we've been following this story for some time and I know top story today you were yeah. dealing with the issue. Yeah. So at what point did uh, the news come through? Well, the hint was dropped by the President's Special Advisor on Corruption, um, Daniel Batadan, on Newsline because he, we asked him about, you know, the, an update of what has happened since the uh, Chief Justice Committee sent their report to him. And he says, well, a letter had been written already to Madame Loretta Lamte, but he was hesitating to tell us what the contents said exactly. So after that, uh, we had spoken to the uh, Communications Minister who confirms that in fact uh, the president has accepted a recommendation by the uh, investigative committee set up by the chief justice uh, that recommended that she be removed and so as of tonight she's no longer the uh, shroud boss. All right. It's instructive to note that uh, the total recall decks actually went back to the story yeah. and uh, we're trying to revive it and tell us mm. at what point yeah. you know, it was. Yeah. Would you say it was a coincidence? Well, it, it, we, we, we got an intercepted document. Uh, you know, this whole sitting, the hearings that led to what has happened tonight was in camera. And in other words, it was secretly held just between herself, her lawyers and the petitioners. And so nobody knew and they had to under strict confidentiality clauses in there not to talk to anybody. So nobody knew anything. Then today we, we intercepted some of the documents about how the proceedings itself had gone. And some of the very interesting things that we learned today from, from these uh, uh, documents before the committee was that uh, Madame Loretta Lamte, for example, in one uh, uh, instance, admitted to violating the country's rent laws. And she said she didn't know that the rent laws uh, prohibited people, landlords and uh, people seeking to rent from paying, paying advance. an advance of two years. It has to be a, a, a maximum, a limit of six months. Uh, and so she didn't know that. And she thought it was a two-year uh, permit within the laws. And But also said, well, the other uh, shark bosses before me also did the same, and so if you're saying I'm wrong, then they were also wrong. I'm you sure. know, so so that's what triggered today's conversation is about you know what had happened for the committee, and then tonight we are learning she's been asked to go. Right. So just for the benefits of those who are just hearing the story for the very first time, can you just take us through what exactly happened in brief? In brief. So essentially, uh, the shark boss allegations were 
made against her that she spent uh, misapplied state funds. Let's put it that way. Uh, thousands, more than $148,000 she spent on renting uh, very expensive accommodation. Some, some includes a hotel accommodation. At the same time, she was spending against state funds 180000 of that to renovate an official residence that her predecessor was just living in just before uh, he moved on. I'm talking about, uh, you know, um, uh, Emil Short and then subsequently Hannah Bossman. And questions were raised about propriety of uh, why would you spend that kind of money at the time when Shrive yourself was lacking funds to prosecute cases. And it, it turns out that in, she had rented this uh, accommodation for in excess of two years, and which clearly the petitioner, something was a lawyer for Ms. Nyama, who had brought this up, stated that that is a clear violation of the law. And one of the key things they made in this particular application, which was interesting, was that she, as charge boss, is a kind of person, administrative justice, uh, human rights chief uh, officer. If you came to the person, came to her and said, my landlord was kicking me out because he was asking for two year rent, she's supposed to defend you. Yet, she's breaking that same law. Uh, and what is, what is her excuse? What is her reason for doing that? And he, she then gives, tells the committee that, uh, I want to quote this one because it's an interesting one, that, I, I, well, Shra doesn't deal with rent cases. That's the first thing she said. He says, quote, that Shra does not handle such cases. And then she goes on to say, in another breath, though, that uh, they, if, even if it comes to us, quote, it is dealt with by a dedicated estate unit. Then she goes on, again, seeming contradiction, says, I wish to assure this committee that I have the utmost concern for citizens rendered homeless and without shelter and will never knowingly breach the uh, provisions of a law designed for their protection. Um, so that is what had gone on yeah. um, in, in, in terms of the right. processes leading up to this. And obviously, the committee, after hearing her side of the story, wrote a recommendation to the president saying, let her go. Right. And the president had Has, no choice okay. than to say let her go because the law says once the president receives it, he shall act on that recommendation. That's what he's done tonight. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Evans Mensa. So the very latest we're getting is that uh, Loretta Lante, the Shrash Commissioner, has been asked to go by the president. We're taking a break. When we come back, we'll bring you entertainment news. Entertainment news. It's Time now for entertainment. Uh, Miss G is here. Good evening to you, Miss G. Good evening, Israel. How are you doing? I'm fine. I like the polka dots red tie, you know. Oh, yeah? That's Thank you. classy. Thank you. Thank mm. you. Right, let's get on to entertainment. And then what? Shatawale versus Bulldog. This thing is, is ongoing now. Yes, it's still the in issue in entertainment and what actually happened today is that the police actually invited Shatawali. Yesterday they took the audio recording from the radio station where he granted the interviews and today they actually invited him to the station. The thing about it is that Shata won't talk to us. The police also won't tell us what the invitation was about. So that's what we know for a fact okay. that Shata Wale was invited by the police because he had said that Bulldog had threatened to kill him like he killed the other guy. Okay. You know? Meanwhile, we also know that uh, Kwakese had been intimating that he wanted the police to actually take up the matter. Exactly. And Not so he alone, but Esla Wusu as well has been talking about the fact that she wants uh, the police to revisit the case because the allegation made by Shatawali is a wild one to just let go. Yeah. Mm. All right. So Stoneboy is still in the in the news. Uh, yes. His, his yes. Collaboration with exactly. Morgan. You know, yesterday I, I we brought you a video of his performance with uh, the Morgan Heritage Band. Today he did an exclusive video for us multimedia, and oh, he's wow. been, exactly he's been talking about the tour and what privileges the tour brings him, and the fact that he has a collaboration coming up soon. Pretty shortly. Exactly. If, from what he's telling us. Uh huh. Uh huh. Stoneboy collaborating with, with Morgan, Morgan Heritage Band. Morgan Heritage. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. movie witchcraft in the movie industry. It's always been a part of our movie industry. Exactly. Is it, is it going away? Exactly why the BBC will want to question us about it. You know, there's a new movie called The Cursed One, and it was directed by Nana Obriyebwa. He had an interview with the BBC, and uh, Peter asked him that, you know, unlike Hollywood, where they have changed the, 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 the culture of the entire world with your movies, how come in Africa, Ghana to be precise, all we do is to exist exhibit the bad aspects of our culture, witchcraft, and all that. And he's been talking about the fact that some people still need help here in Ghana.
Good evening, Ghana. We do some sports now. We begin from the western region of Ghana. And I'm sure you'll be wondering what exactly is happening there. The ECG are planning to sue the National Sports Authority for unpaid that. We understand that the NSA is owing ECG to the tune of almost 400,000 Ghana CD. We've been speaking to the PRO of the western regional branch of ECG, Philip Osei Bonsu. He tells us more. Uh, began that process. What we do is, uh, for us at the regional office, we just put uh, the necessary information together and forward saying to our legal directorate in Accra, to, you know, between the prosecution. So, yeah, we, we've arrived at that decision to uh, prosecute because we are left with no other option. As you rightly said, the stadium was disconnected in uh, December 2014, so it's almost a year now since the disconnection, and we've not seen any you know, firm commitment from the National Sports Authority uh, to want to redeem itself relative to the, to the debt. And it's, it's, it's quite humongous. I mean, if you look at the figure, we are dealing with 398,871 Ghana cities. That's quite huge. So uh, we think this is the only option we are left with, you know, to reclaim our, our debt. Black Star skipper Yasser Majan has made a transition from uh, El Ain in the United Arab Emirates to play for Shanghai SIPG, and he's been talking of the quality of the Chinese league. Not that easy as people people think. You know, um, we always say travel and see. You know, uh, it's not. Although the league is not hyped like the Premiership and stuff, but we've got quality players, and uh, we've got international players who were even better in Europe. You know, talking about Robinho, Robinho is in Guangzhou right now. We've got a lot of great, great players um, in, in the league that are performing for their teams. You know, um, Paulinho played for Tottenham last season. He's there right now. You know, so a lot of things are going on. You know, uh, but it's, it's, it's all about the individual. You know, you just need to make sure you are disciplined on your training programs and then do what you do best. So um, I'm enjoying myself and I would say um, the league is um, competitive, although it's not hyped, like the way people see it to be as like like the english premiership or the french league but the the, the level there is high and Ghanaian boxer Imano Otego is set to make a return to the ring on november the 20th and this has been confirmed by the chairman of baby Jet promotions yeah asamajan we're planning um, a fight for him um, in, on, on the 20th of, of november uh, this month you know and uh, Where? Um, he'll be fighting in, in ghana you know and um, I think he needs to fight uh, for for him to build his um, um, rank in the in the in his, in his division. You know, he needs to fight, or else um, maybe they can strip up his his title from him. You know, so we need to, we just have to make sure he, he fights and then um, keep on going. The boy the boy is doing well. He's he's a world title material, and we know what he can do. You know, so we're trying to just push him to, to the world title stage and um, hopefully I'm sure we will get there. All 22 members of the Ghana Football Association are richer by $15,000 after the FA approved these uh, payments as escrasher for uh, members of uh, the committee who served between 2011 and 2015. A member of the committee, Winfred Osekweku, has been uh, justifying this decision by Congress. Through other networks, and there's no way I can deny the fact that I've received 15,000 words from there. But definitely from internally generated funds. From where? Internally generated funds from the FA. And when we do that, what we are telling you is that uh, this is not public funds. FA is a privately run institution and is capable of raising money from different sources. And as ESCO members, there's no way to, to, to go ahead and approve such payment if provision has not been made. That is why we are not paid, uh, uh, let me say, directors remuneration at the end of every month. If really we were working on a professional basis or, let me say, involuntary basis, definitely would have uh, taken allowances or salary by the end of every month. It therefore stands to reason that uh, within a certain tenor, there will be the need for uh, payment of some sort to be made to members. So at the end of it all, uh, uh, you you benefit one way or the other from serving uh, uh, as ESCO member uh, uh, at the FA. 
We do some action from the UEFA Champions League games currently ongoing. Arsenal. My understanding is that Arsenal are currently losing by three goals to zero. Quite a number of games being played at the that point. Quickly, we'll keep you up to speed with the results of these games. Barcelona leading Bate Borisov by Lone Goroma. Also defeated by Leverkusen by two goals to zero. Arsenal, like I told you, losing by three goals. And Olympiacos also losing by zero to one to Dynamo Kiev. Chelsea. Mm. Chelsea leading by one goal to zero. Maccabi Tel Aviv also losing by 0-1 to Port 2. Genk and Valencia drawing 0-0 with Zenit and Petersburg looking to make it 4-4 four four in their games.